five seconds just to give you a test test. Let me know when. Test, 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 test. Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Butler. I am a Technically Reporter in, for Technically Philadelphia. And I would like to introduce you to the Tech 2020 uh, workshop on big tech trends affecting uh, businesses this year and beyond. Uh, we have our wonderful guest, uh, Jean Marks, with us. Jean Marks is waving to our, our amazing crowd. And yeah, this year has changed how work gets done, likely forever. And this fast-paced session will uh, we'll be exposed to an array of trending technologies, software, workflows, and tools to make your organizations more effective and efficient. And with that, you know, I'll let Gene get to doing what he does best. All right, Michael, thank you very much. And hopefully uh, my sound is getting through and I'm glad that we're up and running um and ready to talk to each other so uh thanks for joining me guys and uh and and hearing what i've got to say and some of the advice that i've got to give as well and i hope you find it helpful just so you know his little background uh i uh run a 10-person uh, consulting firm outside of philadelphia in valley kinwood and we've got about 600 active clients all around the delaware valley uh that we serve as well we've been around for more than 20 years uh that's all i'm going to say about that because it's going to start making me feel old once i start talking about how long we've actually been doing this but we saw uh, you know we implemented an array of, of different um applications and technologies uh to help mostly small and medium-sized companies uh you know adapt so you know, what I wanted to share with you today is a, is, is a few different things. Now, in addition to, to 
uh, you know, running my company. Um, I also am a technology columnist for Forbes magazine. So I write six times a month for Forbes. Uh, my, my weekly column, which comes up every Sunday morning at 7 a.m., uh, where I list out five uh, small business technologies and news that happened in the past week and, and specifically how they affect your business. So a lot of people ask about, like, how do I keep up with these technologies? How do I know uh, for my own business, uh, you know, what's new and what's trending? And my advice to you is um, if you if you follow me on Forbes, if you uh, look me up uh, there on Sunday mornings and you get my column, um, I will keep you up to date on all the new sort of trends and things that are going on regarding small businesses. Now, none of this stuff is stuff that um, I come up with creatively. I'm not that smart. All I can do is I can tell you uh, what my clients are doing. And, and other small and medium-sized companies around the country are doing what they're what they're implementing, where they're investing their money, where they're spending their cash, what technologies are important for them. So I'm going to go through, and I, you know, in the next uh, three hours that I have with you, just kidding, like 45 minutes is what I have with you. I want to go through and um, share with you some of the uh, some of the bigger trends that are out there in technologies that I think you should be aware of. I'll mention some applications and 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 certain types of techs, but I just want to you know just so you can see and these trends affect it, whether you're in manufacturing, whether you're in distribution, whether you're in retail. Uh, I'll have some specific retail things to share with you too. Um, all of these things um, will impact your business and stuff you might want to be considered doing. Now it's late in the morning now. I know we're heading on towards lunchtime, um, so you know you've been watching presentations before. Uh, you know I I, I want to make sure that you're paying attention. So as I go through here and I, and I talk about different things, um, I'll be reminding you, I'll be like kind of quizzing you. So as I finish a few different points I'd like to make, just to make sure that you're keeping up to speed on what I'm talking about, um, what I'll do is I'll be asking you some questions just to, you know, so the knowledge is getting through. The questions are not that hard, and sometimes I like to play around as well. To give you an example of the kinds of questions I like to ask in a presentation, like here's an example, okay? Like for example, like true or false, in 1969, the Apollo 11 astronauts were required to fill out customs forms before returning to Earth. You think that's true, false? It is actually true, believe it or not. This is the actual customs form that the Apollo 11 astronauts had to fill out. It, it said they literally departed from the moon on July 24th, 1969. So again, you think we've got tough immigration problems now. They've been going on for a long period of time. Another question for you, how about this? True or false, in 1974, so that is 3,000 year old mummy could be flown to Paris for necessary repairs, the Pharaoh Ramses II was issued a valid Egyptian passport. Do you think that's true or false? The answer is actually true. Not only was he issued a passport, but this is what the passport looked like. Not only that, this is what Keith Richards looks like, just in a sort of related thing. And finally, true or false, 10% of Americans think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. It's actually false. It's 7% of Americans actually think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. Okay, enough playing around. Let's get to the details. Let's talk about some specific technologies and let's go through a few big trends that I want to make sure that you're aware of um, so you can target your investment dollars and your technology dollars this year. The first big trend that we're seeing, and by the way, these are in no order, so I don't want to say that anything is more important than others, um, but the first one that I, I, I did want to talk about is, is the explosive growth of CRM applications, customer relationship management applications. Now, I'm sure you're aware of some of the big players that are out there. There's Salesforce. Salesforce is now literally part of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That's how big that Salesforce's uh, uh, stock ticker is CRM. So just to give you an idea, but Salesforce, of course, is not the only game in town. There are uh, many, many other CRMs that are out there for both small businesses and large businesses for specific industries as well, or specific types of people that need certain types of solutions. It is a $30 billion market that is projected for 2021, just to give you an idea. And I, and I want to explain to you why it's become so important for businesses and how businesses are, are, are making the best use of it, because it's become a core database. And, I, and, and the smartest clients that I have that are working with CRM applications have realized that these CRM applications are not, it's not just software, it, it's data. And it is a centralized place for all of your data. Now, most of the CRM applications today are cloud-based. There are still a few on-premise applications, uh, Goldmine, Act, some of the older school ones are still around, 
But you know, when we're implementing CRM at clients and when I'm seeing what's out there, most people are going to the cloud. And there are plenty of good CRMs out there, again, besides Salesforce that you can that you can choose from. And by the way, uh, Zoho, <clears throat> Sugar CRM, Microsoft Dynamics, or just, just to name just to name a few. Now, it's a $40 billion market. Data is shared by everyone when you have a good CRM system. And the reason why they had become even so much more popular in 2020 is because of all of the work of home, people working from home. So you need a platform where people can actually tie into and, and collaborate with each other, even in a distributed environment. So all people have been working remotely, even as they're coming back to the office, some people are still at home, they need to be sharing that data somehow. And a CRM system has served to do that. And remember, a CRM system is not not just a sales system. I mean, yes, the good ones, the mainstream ones will handle forecasting and opportunity management and doing quotes and contact management. But I have a lot of clients that are using it for project management and a lot of clients using it for marketing and a lot of clients using it for customer service. Many of the mainstream applications out there come with features and functionalities for you to be able to do it. So again, a good CRM system will include as you know, part of the core, you know, uh, you know, sales functionality. And the biggest sales functionality that a CRM system, what I'm seeing among all my clients, um, has to do with pipelines. Not, you know, not just quotes and forecasts, but, but pending deals. So my advice to you is, if you are looking to get us, I have seen many, many CRM systems fail over the years. I've seen a lot of problems with uh, companies, particularly small and medium-sized companies, um, adopting them or using them. But just to share a little secret with you, the clients and the businesses that I know that have succeeded the most with CRM are, are really focusing on keeping uh, you know, the data really tight and getting good reports out of the system. The analytics and the reporting has gotten much, much better in these systems. And most of them are, if you really want to succeed with it, get rid of your spreadsheets that are tracking sales, your pipeline, your forecast, your opportunities, get rid of them and make sure you're doing it through your CRM system. Now, besides sales, like I mentioned before, a lot of my clients are now moving towards service as well, which makes complete sense. Because you want you know, a 360 degree view of customers when you are dealing um, wherever you are. And there is nothing worse than a salesperson calling up a customer to sell them an upgrade or new products or checking in with them. And, and they don't even realize that there's a service issue that's going on. And my best clients, when they've implemented CRMs or if they've grown with their CRMs, they realize that instead of running away from issues and problems, they run towards them and they embrace them and they use their CRM systems to do just that. So they are employing the service capabilities of their CRM system, and most good ones have service capabilities. The ability to create tickets, um, put your problems into queues, and also build knowledge bases. Uh, so whenever problems occur, uh, people in the company are putting the problems into the database with what the solutions are for those problems. So that again, if a customer you know, calls in or emails in and there's an issue, you know, people are working from home, they can't talk to each other, they can't see each other in the office, but they can share and collaborate that information in one place so you can provide good service, quick service to your customers. So CRM systems have become more and more popular for doing that. And finally, CRM system is providing marketing. Now, people ask me about different types of marketing applications, uh, Constant Contact, MailChimp, uh, great ones like Marketo, uh, Pardot. There, you know, there, there, there's a few good big you know, campaign management and marketing applications that are out there. HubSpot is another really good one as well. But just remember, your marketing is only as good as your data. And your data has to come from your database. And your database should be your CRM system. And I've seen more and more clients this year invest in getting their data right in their CRM systems so then they can then integrate their CRM systems with other marketing applications like Constant Contact, MailChimp, HubSpot, and some others so that they're, 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 they're keeping track of their data really well and then they're getting that information out so that people, um, you know, they can use those marketing automation softwares to take fully advantage of that data. In today's CRM world, most of the good mainstream ones, I mentioned them before, they integrate with the mainstream marketing applications as well. Many of the mainstream CRM applications come with marketing capabilities. And if you're a smaller company, 
before you get all wrapped up in getting you know, another marketing application, you might find that the features that come in your CRM application are good enough. So sales, service, marketing, really, really big. So one thing I will leave you with when it comes to CRM, they're difficult to implement. Uh, all the horror stories that you hear about them are true. It is, they're, they're not accounting systems. So it doesn't mean you have to use them to get invoices out the door or to, you know, account for, you know, checks or payroll or whatever. It is, uh, you know, you, you need a culture to be able to implement them. And so companies have to develop that kind of culture. They've got to have internal and external support to make sure that they're doing it right. They've got to got good data coming out of the system. So it's, it's reliable and valuable. But long term, I just have to assure you, as I've seen the growth in these applications, I want you to know that a good CRM database, it increases the value of the company that has them. So when I see now a lot of organizations looking to sell their businesses, business owners get older, they want to bring in maybe an equity partner, they want to or something like that. When they get valued, people now on the outside are looking at data because we look at a big data world. And the companies that have good CRM databases, they get valued higher. So they are more valuable. So again, if you're having, if you're struggling getting it up and running and you're struggling using your CRM system, um, you know, I, I sympathize with you. But remember, it's not just about the short-term value that it provides, the opportunities, the quotes, the service, the marketing. Think long-term that one day, if you ever want to you know, get your business valued because you want to sell it, you want to move on, having a great CRM database will make you money when you eventually cash out. So CRM, that is the first trend that I wanted to discuss. Trend number two has to do with HR platforms. Now, back in the day, I never would have expected, you know, you know human resources platforms to be so popular. Uh, you know, you think particularly because they're on the cloud. So you're like, oh, that's payroll information and personnel information. How do we, you know, should we be putting it out there? What about security? What about... I, most small businesses that I'm talking to nowadays, they're ignoring that. They're, they're moving forward fast and they're investing in HR platforms. In fact, I would tell you that if you've got more than five employees at your business, you need to be seriously considering investing in an HR platform next year. Now, there are, again, lots of great providers of these HR platforms you can think of. Uh, you know, Paychecks and ADP have great online platforms. There's the big payroll service providers, but then there's Gusto, there's Zenefits, there's Bamboo, you know, the, just to give you some other examples of some of the, the players that are out there. And let me explain to you why these HR platforms are so valuable and why they're so hot is because they provide certain types of key features, but they, they, they push the work down to the worker. So for example, if you have a good HR platform in place in your business, and again, say it's from Paychex or it's from Gusto, they all come with mobile apps. And nowadays you've got employees that have their HR platform software on their mobile device. And because they've got it on their mobile device, they can do sorts of things that they had to ask for help for before. Because these HR platforms integrate with payroll systems. So if you need to check on last week's payroll, you pull it up on your mobile device and you can see what that was. If you have a question about your paycheck from the last week, you can look up that information as well and maybe submit questions to your HR person. If you want to put in for, say, vacation or, or, or sick time, most of these HR platforms will help you manage that as well. If you are, you know, you, you have questions about insurance, if you need to update forms, if you need to fill out, uh, you know, applications, or you need to update certain information for your benefits, like your 401k, your HR system will allow you to do that all through a mobile app. Now think about it. Who was doing that stuff before or who's doing it now, depending on your company? Some poor schlub in your office has got this responsibility. Somebody does HR in your company. Somebody does, you know, or payroll. Maybe it's your bookkeeper. Maybe it's your office manager. It's time consuming and it's inefficient and it's unproductive because all of that stuff, the checking of the payroll, the getting the questions answered, the updating contact information, the filling out insurance forms, filling out 401k or benefits for all of that can be done by the employees. They don't need to go and stand in line at somebody's office to get a paper form and fill it out. 
it, good companies are pushing this stuff to their employees because it's reducing overhead. It reduces the amount of work that people in the office have to do, and it puts more at the hands of the employees. And honestly, now that more than 50% of our workforce are millennials or even younger, this is a generation that is used to working in the cloud, used to working on mobile devices, and, and are asking for this type of control over their, you know, over their pay, over their compensation, and over their benefits. So as an employer, and you're looking to recruit new people to your company, and trust me, we'll be back to recruiting new people pretty soon, having a good you know, cloud-based HR system is really critical, um, for, even from a recruiting standpoint. A couple other things I want to bear in mind when, when we talk about HR platforms. One of them has to do with performance reviews. I mean, I know, I know we all do a great job with performance reviews, right? As business owners, right, we're, we're on time with them all. Uh, everybody gets some, you know, all the feedback is there. It's, it's just a, a well-oiled machine. We're not behind on any of them at all. Everybody's getting real time, right? So obviously not. Most people that I talk to, most of my clients have a mess when it comes to performance reviews. They're, they're, they're out of date, they're behind, they're trying to play catch up ball. And a lot of their employees, you ask employees, one of the number one issues that employees have with their employers is that they're not getting enough feedback on their performance throughout the course of the year. And even when it comes time for their performance review, it's almost like sort of like, a, you know, like an afterthought. So HR platforms really help with that. The, the mainstream ones that I've mentioned, they come with performance review capabilities, which means that just real time, managers and employees or any other key people can be leaving notes or, or you know, you you applauding different employees for doing different things. All of that is there. So, you know, they're doing it real time. You can fill out forms. You can schedule performance reviews. You get alerts. So when they're coming up, so these things don't fall through the cracks, which is a critical thing for your employees. And finally, Onboarding, offboarding, there was a lot of legal considerations to be made. There's also a lot of things in your HR department that have to be really watched out. Uh, potential sexual harassment claims, discrimination claims, things, you know, things like that that need to be reported and have a process. A good HR platform provides those capabilities for you to do, even to the extent where you can customize your own forms or employees can pull up their employee handbook right through their mobile device. So all of that stuff, this is a hot, hot industry. HR platforms are really big. So we talked about CRM, and we talked about HR platforms, those are two. While I'm still on the topic of HR, I'd like to still talk about some of the, the, the technologies that are providing great perks for employees. And like I said earlier, we're in an economic environment where unfortunately there have been a lot of people laid off, there are a lot of people unemployed, I mean, it's a real downturn right now. But there, there is, it was, it was just a few months ago when our biggest problem was recruiting more people. And, and trust me when I tell you, the, the recovery will continue on and we will be back to those same recruiting headaches. And we'll be grateful for those recruiting headaches when the economy finally does recover. And when that happens, or even as it's happening, it's critical for us as employers to make sure we're providing the most competitive benefits possible. So here is just a sampling of a few tools, techs, and services in the benefits field that I'm seeing some of my smarter clients offer to their employees to not only recruit new ones, but also keep them around. So one, for example, is Tuition.io. A bit, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but um, a lot of people have a lot of student debt. Did you realize that? It, it, is, it, is, a, it, it is crushing like I, the, our younger generation of workers. And so to respond, a lot of employers are providing help paying back student debt. And once things get back to normal, my expectation is the next year or two, Congress will be passing new legislation to allow tax benefits and you know, so that employers that pay down student loans, not just the interest, can get deductions for doing so. We're looking at that going forward. Tuition.io is a great platform that I've seen some of my clients use that helps manage tuition and loan payments. So tuition repayment, it, it integrates in with your payroll system, integrates in with loan processing systems, and then provides that middle that middleware so that people can, can manage their, you know, their, their um, uh, tuition and loan repayments. So bear in mind, that's a really great application. Next, fond perks. And again, you can Google these. I didn't put in any websites, but Fond Perks is a, is a site where it's a service that offers um, uh, coupons and discounts just for being an employee. 
So you get a goodie bag every month, basically, a virtual goodie bag uh, if you're an employee of a company. I think the companies pay, it's like 10 bucks a month an employee or something like that. What's in the goodie bag? Uh, you know, Ten percent off your next car rental from Avis. You know, uh, you know, a your free entree at a local restaurant if you buy a, a similar priced entree. You know, um, a uh, you know discount to the next visit that you make to Outback Steakhouse. So there's a whole list of perks that this company has lined up, and so employers can subscribe, sign on to it, and then offer these perks to their employees. So you can say, hey, you come and work for us. You get also this whole goodie bag of stuff every month of different discounts and things. Um, uh, from different and participating businesses. So it's another little cool service uh, that, you know, and platform that I've seen some of my clients go to. Financial advisory apps are another great technology that have just exploded in popularity over the last couple of years. Because a lot of business owners have realized that as long as their employees are happy uh, financially, they will be happy as well. So a lot of apps like Hello Wallet, and there's a bunch of others, uh, Mint is another one, they integrate in with your payroll system if you want to give them permission. And as an employee, uh, you, you, you have that mobile app. If you want to share your, your personal financial information, your, your life insurance information, your, your savings, you know, your, obviously your payroll information, these apps can provide advice to your employees. Should I buy or lease my next car? How much should I be saving for my kids' college tuition? Uh, should I buy a whole life or, or term insurance? That's what these apps do and really smart employers are, are putting them into use for a lot of their employees. ShapeUp, say there's a whole industry of health maintenance apps and ShapeUp is one of them as well. They're getting better and better like Fitbit. They're engaging and they're integrating with health insurance companies. So ask your health insurance companies if they have a health maintenance app that you can you know, monitor or the employees can monitor their health and help them get discounts or at least keep rates down for your health insurance. Card Cash is a service that I use in my business. You buy what, what they sell. They sell um, discount gift cards. So, uh, give me tell. Like a year or so ago, uh, a friend of mine gave me a friend gave me a gift card, a hundred dollar gift card to the hair cuttery. Okay, let me repeat that. So he gave me a gift card for the hair cuttery. Okay, I mean something that I would. I would use like once over the next five years. So I had no use for that. So what did I do? I took the gift card. I sold it to Card Cash for 50 bucks, which by the way, that was a great deal for me. And then I wound up buying like another discount gift card for the Outback Steakhouse, which is what I really care about. But Card Cash, they bought it from me for 50 bucks and then they're selling it for 75 bucks, which means that you as an employer can go on to Card Cash and get a bunch of discounted gift cards and then you can use to give them out to employees as part of rewards or incentives or whatever. So I've got some clients that participate in that. Very is a service that in some areas, it really depends on where you are. It's an online vending machine service with all sorts of nutritional stuff. But don't worry, all of you baby boomers like me, there's also they also include peanut butter cups and Milky Ways and all the Snickers and the good stuff that you know that we like as well. But it's online, will automatically reorder, give you the opportunity to reprice them. So you can charge a little bit more and then put whatever you charge, whatever money you collect from, from the vending machines from your employees, maybe you can go to a charity or a local community or something like that so gives you control over the vending and also it all happens online and very quickly it's it's really excellent mdvip it, you know it's it's a telehealth and an in-person health service as well for uh, that a lot of employers are starting to offer to key managers you pay extra around 1500 bucks extra a year so it's on top of health insurance but it gives you a concierge medical service for those employers. So my sister is actually an MD VIP doctor in South Philadelphia. She's got a few hundred clients and she's at their beck and call whenever they need any service. So it's become another, another benefit, another service that a lot of employers are doing. And finally, there's Bonusly. So what Bonusly is, it's a mobile app and it's a team building app. There is a whole generation of team building apps out there so that managers can award points to uh, to employees when they do that. Like, it, I kind of call it the, the the Harry Potter app. You know, it's like it's like, well, that was a great job you did on that project, James. Ten points for Gryffindor, right? And then whoever employees has the most points at the end of a period, I don't know, maybe you give them an Outback Steakhouse gift card that you got for a discount at Card Cash. So it's a it's a team building thing and a competitive app, and people like that. So these are just a few of the apps and technologies and services that I've seen out there among employers this year. Um, and I expect to see them become even more popular and used, um, you know, in the years, you know, in the next couple of years as we recover 
start hiring more people. Okay, hey, let's see what we've learned so far. I promise I would ask you just to make sure that you're staying awake through all this. So true or false, CRM systems, if implemented the right way, can increase the value of a business. True, right? I said that, right? It's a database. It's a big data world. People want to buy this stuff. They're, you look to buy, sell your company or bring in a partner. They're going to look at the value of your database and a CRM could be a very, very important asset for your company. True or false? You can use a good HR platform to improve your performance evaluation process. Also true. So these platforms, Paychex, you know, uh, you know, Gusto, Zenefits, there's a bunch of Bamboo, you, you get them, they're mobile, they do all the sort of HRE kind of things, but they have really good performance evaluation features as well that will help you and your employees will like you because of that. True or false? Bonusly helps manage bonus and other compensation. False. Remember, Bonusly is the Harry Potter app. It's just you're just awarding points to employees based on how they're doing and team building kind of stuff. And then you can give them a bonus, like a gift card or something like that afterwards. But Bonusly kind of helps manage all of that. True or false? One in 100 Europeans are conceived in IKEA bed. The answer to that actually is false. It's one in 10 Europeans are conceived in an Ikea bed, according to a report from the New York Times just last year. And true or false, you can make a ponytail for your daughter using a vacuum cleaner. That is actually true. This is how you do it. Pretty brilliant. Using, by the way, notice it's the dad that's doing this right now. He's using like, like, like an oven as a mirror. Do you see that up there as well? But mom is clearly away on business or not around or whatever. But yeah, you can do that. Okay. All right. Here's what we've learned so far. Number one, CRM has become a mission critical technology for growing small and medium sized businesses. Number two, Cloud-based HR platforms increase productivity and reduce overhead. Number three, tuition reimbursement, financial, wellness apps are among the growing number of hot techs and services that great companies use to perk their employees. Let's move on to the next trend. And that trend is integration. Because for years, my clients have been asking me, Gene, why do we have to buy all these different applications? Can't we just get one that does it all? And all we, all we have to say over the years, no, because it's for many different reasons. That is changing. And we will see over the next few years how there are some really powerful business suites coming onto the market that do do it all. One of them is located right in South Jersey and they are called Striven. Striven is an integrated business suite. It is a, an application that you buy that of course handles your accounting, but within that application has the capability to handle your HR and your CRM, as well as your project management, document management as well, and other functions within your business. There's powerful uh, order processing, purchase orderings, and inventory management as well. Striven is the kind of company as well that when you buy it, they will help you customize it for your company, you know, for, for what your company needs. And it's all done for like this like monthly fee that you pay. It's all completely cloud-based. Striven is just one of those companies that is sort of just you're sort of leading the field in integrated applications. And what's happening is that companies like Microsoft, Sage, Intuit, Google, so the, so Zoho is another one. Many of the larger software vendors are doing what Striven is doing as well. They are, they are coming out with their own suites of products. And by suite, I mean that you have various modules that are, that are there, but they are all built off the same platform, the same database from the ground up and just integrate back and forth with each other. So look for over the next couple of years, more applications like Striven, where you've got a complete integrated platform for everything. So if you're looking for something where you just, I just want one thing, I can go to one place and do all my business functionality, or you've got a client that's asking you about it, there are answers that are available now. Striven is one of them, but there are others as well, and there will be more answers in the coming years. It is a big trend, and it's just called integration. So that's something absolutely for you to keep in mind. Let me talk now about another big trend, and that is virtual and augmented reality, because it's here and it is already impacting how business is done. And it has had a big impact because of COVID. 
and how it has changed and, and, and had a big uh, you know, a, a change to a lot of the companies that are using these kinds of technology. Now, the, the example I wanted to give, now there are other competitors out there, but um, Microsoft, for example, has got their, they, they released last year their, their HoloLens 2. It's 3,500 bucks for the unit. You can see the guy in this photo here, he's wearing a HoloLens, that's what it looks like, right? And what it does is, is it provides virtual and augmented reality to the consumer, to, to the worker who might be out in the field or even a worker that's in the office. And it is having a wide array of applications and use among businesses, both large and small. So for starters, when you have an augmented reality device on your face, like you see this guy wearing, it provides you real-time views of data. In addition to having real-time views of data that you can be like instruction manuals, help, kind of you know, data behind whatever that you're doing, it also beams back those views, potentially somebody back in the office. So if a worker is working on something, whether they're in the field or maybe they're in the, you know, the, the production floor and they've got a question or they've got a problem or they're seeing with the screen or whatever, the way these the Microsoft HoloLens and other devices work you know, like it is that that worker can communicate with somebody else, not on that location, in the back office, somewhere you know, located somewhere else, where that person can actually see what the worker is doing with the same eyes that the worker has because they're seeing it through HoloLens. I can say, oh, no, 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 you need to put this here. You need to adjust this here. You need to put a bandage there. So these types of applications are having a big impact in the healthcare industry, and they're a big impact in the real estate industry, and for construction workers that are out on the site and doing work where maybe people that are estimators or even architects can view what they're doing and answer questions as they go along the way. So real estate has had a big deal. Construction has had a big in impact as well. There's also architectural design. There's healthcare as well. Now, back to real estate. So a lot of real estate agents now are taking these virtual you know, devices, so, which means that if you're walking through a home and you're looking at that home, you might have a buyer that's 2,000 miles away that's looking at the home with you. So that way, you know, the buyer could say, go into this room. You know, what's that spot up there on the ceiling? Can you take another look at the bike? And whoever is there work, you know, wearing the virtual device is seeing it, beaming it back to the buyer, maybe like giving instructions or notes or whatever. Right? Same thing if you're taking a test drive of an automobile. In addition, these augmented reality devices are tracking design schematics. They can provide maps to the users that are actually that, that are out there as well. Um, obviously, we talked about simulated walkthroughs. And in Microsoft's case, and by the way, I'm not selling from Microsoft. I'm just giving you an example here. It integrates with their backend systems, like you know Microsoft Teams and uh, Dynamics 365, and their their reporting functions, which is Power BI. I, I just I'm giving you that example because that's what it does. These augmented devices are no, no longer just on an island. The good ones integrate back to business applications and databases so that they're providing real-time information back to the user wherever the user is. So augmented reality is big. Now in retail, it's becoming even bigger, mainly either as a, as a marketing and a, and a sort of a, a promo kind of thing, in London, Topshop, which is a chain, chain of clothing stores, uh, they have on their flagship Oxford Street store, the virtual water slide. No, you don't get wet. You don't have to put on a bathing suit, nothing like that. But you literally sit in a container and put on a virtual augmented reality device, and you go through this water slide of London. It's like a ride that you're taking. And Topshop is using it as a way to attract people into their store and give them some kind of a Disney-like entertainment experience. Oh, by the way, now that you're there, how about if you take a look at some of the products that we sell um, and hopefully increase sales as well. Topshop has reported they have seen a significant, what, a 15 to 20% increase in their sales because they have put these types of virtual devices in some of their stores. This big one in their Oxford Street, Main Street uh, uh, flagship store has become like a real draw and a real popular area. But then there's others. Like, I don't know if you've ever gone shopping for a diamond ring uh with your, it is not easy picking these things out, believe me, right? But Hellsberg Diamonds has something called a ring selector. So you have the person that's selecting the ring, puts it on, um, it gets analyzed, you know, completely through the virtual device. It shows you know, the, the quality of the ring and all the specs, and then it'll, it'll take photos of it so that it can compare how different rings look 
on someone's fingers, um, and you can lay them up for comparison and see what you know what makes the work. And speaking of comparison, Neiman Marcus and a lot of stores are putting in what they call memory mirrors, so people can try on clothes. You know, you could see the the young woman here, and she's like, you know, you know, showing up, whatever. Save it, go and try on something else, do the same thing as well, and then you can look at side by side photos or videos of you in the different outfits. You can compare what looks better, what matches better, what's all like. That's just another example of how augmented reality is working, okay? So we talked about uh, augmented you know, reality. We talked about integrated applications. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to talk to you about is about security because ransomware, obviously, and security, big, big issue, not only in 2020, but it's going to go on into 2021. And I wanted to just make sure I share some thoughts with you because this is another technology trend that we've got to be aware of. I don't need to explain to you what ransomware is, right? We all know at this point, right? You know, you know, some hacker in God knows where, Bulgaria or, you know, whoever takes over, uh, you know, you, you download, uh, you know, a bad piece of malware because you got, you got fooled online, you fished on the wrong site, or you clicked on something on an email. It happens to so many of us. You download a piece of malware, goes through your network, locks all the files, and then you get a message from the malware maker saying to, to unlock these files, you need an unlock key, you need to send us $100 in Bitcoin. And if you don't, your files are all going to be destroyed. So, and, and these people, it, 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 it's a billion dollar industry. A hundred thousand computers have been, are affected daily. A billion dollars in payments were made just last year. And one in five, even one in five people who make payments don't get their files back. Wow, big surprise, right? Well, these are all the things that a lot of businesses, small businesses in particular, are dealing with. So um, you have to be aware that ransomware is an issue that's out there. Here's what you need to do to defend yourself against ransomware. Get training. A great software product is called Know Before. Have multi-factor authentication. That's two-factor or multi, two FA. So that's where you log in and then you got to get a text message to your phone so that you have to enter in a certain code. It, it, it limits you know, the amount of people that can, that can access your network. It's not foolproof, but it's really helpful. Update your security software. Get online backup software like Carbonite or Barracuda. And make sure you're running the most recent versions of your operating systems. Those malware guys are looking for ways to get into your network. And if you're still running Windows 95 on your computers, believe me, a lot of people working from home are using old operating systems. Big issue for people. Uh, malware people can really get into uh, to doing that. So the security thing is something that you just need to be aware of. Okay. Let's, uh, let, let's see what we've learned so far. Then I'll just share three more trends and let you go. Striven is one of the many all-in-one platforms that's taking advantage of the growth of integrated suite products. True, there are many of them available now. More are coming. Big, big trend. You should be investing in an integrated system instead of having a whole bunch of different softwares that are out there. True or false, Microsoft HoloLens is only useful for gaming. Obviously false. It's useful in a whole bunch of business applications from healthcare, construction, design, uh, you know, real estate, home showings, whole bunch of uses that a lot of people have, field service technicians as well. True or false, customers need to wear a bathing suit before riding Top Shot's virtual reality water slide. Obviously that's false. You don't need to wear a bathing suit at all because it's virtual, but it is a great promo and a really realistic thing and a lot of fun and Maybe something that uh, something similar that you want to consider for your business. True or false, there's a, an extreme sport called extreme ironing. True, these are real life pictures of athletes that are competing in extreme ironing events around the world. And true or false, Viagra makes flowers stand up straight. It is 100% true. According to The Guardian, apparently that's nitrous oxide, which is in uh, Viagra, nitric oxide. It's a chemical that also helps, uh, you know, that's in Viagra. It also helps flowers stand up straight. As you can tell, uh, it is very, very uh, effective. Okay. Oh, oh, and finally, true or false. When this pot comes out, you know you'll be eating the same thing for the next three days. Obviously, that's true. So what have we learned so far? CRM, mission critical technology, HR platforms, different ways to pay your benefits and whatever. In addition, Integrated software products like Striven, providing all-in-one solutions to SMBs. Finally, virtual and augmented reality technology are bringing new opportunities to service and sell. Ransomware is the number one tech threat to SMBs in 2020 and 21. I got five more minutes to go through three more trends very quickly. So trend number seven is artificial intelligence. 
All sorts of big platforms are using artificial and intelligence bots, just so you are aware. Facebook Messenger will take messages coming in, be able to scan them and reply automatically based on what's in there. CVS Pharmacy, when you're text messaging to renew a, renew a prescription, you're not talking to a person, you're talking to a bot. Skype is using bots to automatically translate conversations real time that you're having with somebody speaking in a different language. H&R Block is using artificial intelligence to scan billions of pages of tax reform, tax return law to make sure that they're doing uh, the right kinds of tax returns. Do not run away from artificial intelligence. Embrace artificial intelligence. You don't have to create these things on your own. The big software guys are doing it for you. Ask them about it and take advantage of it because it will save time and increase your productivity. Trend number eight, brick and mortar retail stores are going more tech. For starters, when you look around retail stores and you look around at the lighting in the different stores, they are all a giant network. It's all run with there's, there many of the stores, the big box stores are installing low energy technology radios that are embedded in their LED lights already around the store. The LED lights are always, they're already powered. So they can, they can, they're like a network that's just ready to happen just through the lighting systems in the store. It's a, you, a, this, a dense grid of nodes. It's located, they're all located within 10 or 20 feet of each other. And then it drives all sorts of things like beacons, which means when you go into a store, people, you can be tracked around as you walk around, see what your shopping experience is, see what products people are going to. And you can tell that a lot of retailers are hugely adopting it in 2020 and 2021. Facial recognition is another big trend within retail. And a lot of the big box stores we're walking into now are identifying by face scans. They can see known shoplifters. They can scan for potential security issues. Some of the key players there, if you're in retail, check out Trueface or Face Watch. And robots in stores. I don't know if you've been to a giant store lately or even to a Walmart. Uh, giant has something called Marty, which are provided to, to provide help. They can identify safety spills and safety issues that are there as well. Alert employees, take photos, and scare the heck out of the kids that see these robots around the stores. And Pepper which is made by SoftBank right now. 10,000 of them are in use around the world. HSBC, Pizza Hut, cruise ships, smaller retailers. They, they're they like a tour guide. They're supposed to be really user-friendly and happy, and they talk to you and all that kind of stuff, which is very, very nice. They're relatively inexpensive. They're providing a, you know, a robotic way to provide customer service to customers coming in. A little bit of a downside here. Some people think that the security is a joke. Uh, one man was actually assaulted, arrested for assaulting a pepper uh, robot so that you really have to you know, kind of be careful. And finally, some people are literally asking if we can just murder the robot altogether. So yeah, there are some issues with some of these robots, I agree, but more and more of them are coming into the workplace. So you need to be aware. And finally, the internet of things are here and robots are coming. So you know, companies like Thyssen and Krupp, which makes all the elevators, they've got, they've got sensors in these elevators to tell them in their headquarters if there's a problem ahead of there being a big issue. Rolls-Royce, which makes airplane engines, has sensors in tens of thousands of these engines that are monitoring for maintenance to keep the planes flying and to make sure if there's any potential issues, people are alerted about them in advance. Sam Sarah puts sensors on moving cars. Amazon is, is having their self-service stores all over the country. And even other people are putting in sensors to monitor agriculture and farming and, you know, and how crops are growing. The internet of things is absolutely here. And finally, in the warehouse, there are robotic warehouse carriers that are being used to pick goods, drive forklifts by self-driving, and count inventory. And many large warehouses, and Amazon is a big employer of this, are using internal drones that are flying around doing inventory counts and seeing where things stand. So let's wrap things up. True or false? Software companies are building AI, artificial intelligence, into their applications, so you don't have to. That is true. True or false? More retailers are leveraging their lighting systems to act as in-store networks. That is true. Tracking people around with beacons and such. True or false. Internet of Things is enabling companies to spot troubles before they happen. Also true through the use of sensors and elevators, planes, agriculture, all that kind of stuff. True or false. It is now legal in 49 states to shoot a pepper robot if you see one. Don't know about that yet. True or false. In 1915, it was legal to mail a baby as long as it was under 15 pounds. False, had to be under 11 pounds for it to be legal. True or false, Jane Jetson was a teen mom. 
absolutely true. If you do the math, she was 32. Daughter Judy was 16 on the show. All you have to do is think about it. I don't need to add it up for you. The woman was absolutely a teen mom. And finally, true or false, it's a scientific fact that when you smell something, it's because molecules from that object are actually sticking to the inside of your nose. Absolutely true. That is a scientific fact. Just want to keep that in your mind. All right. And finally, true or false, this phase has had just about enough with this silly, silly nonsense. All right. Here's what we learned. CRM, mission critical technology trend, cloud-based HR platforms, big technology trend, tuition reimbursement and other benefit platforms, integrated software systems like Striven, big technology trends, virtual and augmented reality, big technology trend, ransomware and security is giving us a lot of headaches with technology, smart leaders are embracing, not avoiding AI and bots, big retailers are embracing tech to boost brick and mortar sales and small merchants are soon going to follow with that. And finally, businesses of all sizes are realizing that internet of things and robots can cut overhead and increase profits. So keep your eye on the ball. There's always things ahead of you. Always look forward. Make sure you're making some of these technology investments to keep your businesses product profitable, productive, and growing in the years to come. True or false, you are much smarter than you were a mere 45 minutes ago. Absolutely true. My name is Gene Marked. This is my contact information. I want to thank you very much. I hope you got some good information from this and enjoy the rest of your day.